What's up guys and girls, welcome to Freedive Passion. Today I'm going to talk to you about what a realistic, realistic expectation could be for the amount of progress and depth that you can make over a month or two months, six months or a year. So I've been training in freediving for a long time now and I get the added experience of being a coach for a long time as well. So I don't only benefit from my own experience with training, I get to see a lot of different personalities and different types of people and how they adapt to training and how they manage to progress in their depth as well. Now the way I teach it's always very um, you know, um, progressive and step by step. I always make sure people build skills and feel ready for the depth before we do the depth. But something that I've noticed is no matter how highly I've trained these people, no matter what level their skills mean they're capable of, and that, let's say their breath hold mean they're capable of, um, equalization, etc., dive time, fitness, there's still going to be a limit to how much these people can progress, or most people can progress. So I'm talking in a general way. Like there's always the 1% or a fraction of 1% of people who can do huge progressions in one go, in one year. But that's not most people, that's not me, and probably that's not you. So what I found is there's kind of like some sort of limit will normally come up if you only have so much time to train. And generally what I've noticed is to go more than 10 meters past the PB, things will generally start to go wrong. Um, I think the reason is, okay, as, you're, as you start training, you train in a way which means you're a better free diver than you were when you got your original PB, let's say the year before. So just to throw some numbers out there, let's say the year before you got 50 meters. Then for the next year, you train to become like better, better at your equalization, more comfortable in the water, etc. And then in your mind, you already feel like, like you're ready and prepared for a 60 meter dive. So then when you start your, your next training period, although your PB is technically 50 meters, you're mentally prepared to do 60 meters. And you can build up to that 60 meters with a bit of confidence because you're, you're sure that you'll be able to do it. But then when you get to 60, you've reached what you see as your limit or your target and even if the whole progress to 60 was easy and comfortable to start going past that normally something's going to go wrong why is it going to go wrong well i think we all need to accept that to free dive and especially to free dive deep it's going against a lot of our natural instincts so we have the conscious mind and the subconscious mind we can say the, the conscious mind is kind of like the ego. This is the part of us which wants to achieve, wants to go deep, sets targets, wants to achieve these targets. And then we have the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is more, you know, just wants to keep us like safe and alive. So if we just continually progress and go deeper, 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 the, at some point, we're gonna reach the point where the subconscious mind is like, okay, you know, we, we keep going deeper. There's no sign of this person like ever stopping. So I'm gonna have to create some sabotage. So now you won't be able to go deeper. And what generally is going to happen is people will start to swallow mouthful. People will start to get contractions on the way down. People will start to feel uncomfortable and early turn. So normally it's one of these things, even not being able to relax on the way down and or not being able to equalize properly on the way down and starting to squeeze. So the way I see it, this is created by the, the subconscious. This is a sabotage to stop you being able to go deeper. And something that I've noticed in, in my experience is this is going to happen, you know, if you only have a month to train, generally the people that I get to train and for myself, we can add, yeah, about 10 meters onto the PB. But then, even if we have two months to train, it's still not enough time to really build confidence with this new PB. 
I think it takes time for the subconscious to accept, okay, this is my new PB, this is my new depth. But still, like, even though you've done it, even though there was no signs of hypoxia, everything, everything felt easy, it still takes an amount of time for that to really like, sink in and for you to really believe it through all the different levels of your consciousness. Not just on the logical level, but on the deeper levels. So just because you can do, add 10 meters in one month doesn't mean you can add 10 meters in the second month. Normally, that second month, would be spent doing repetitions of that PB or building up to that PB depth in different disciplines. So the more times we go to this depth, the more different disciplines we can go to the depth. We hit the depth on good days, we hit the depth on bad days, we hit the depth you know, in a variety of different setups and situations. Sometimes you don't feel too good and you still manage to do the dive. Sometimes the dive feels amazing. All this builds up confidence that okay, if I can do this dive like 10 times, sometimes I was tired, sometimes I felt good, sometimes it felt challenging, but every time I succeeded in this dive, then it really gives you this huge confidence and it's built this base for, for you then to start to move on. For me personally, as I've been training in depth, I kind of unconsciously understood this. And I would only let myself progress 10 meters per year. Even if I was in the water year round and I got opportunities to do deep diving year round, I would simply repeat my PB for the rest of the year. And then at the, by the time I get my next chance to train in the next year, I'll be super confident with that depth and I can progress quite quickly through the next 10 meters. And then I'm just gonna repeat again um, for the rest of the year. So this is what I did from 60 to 70, 70 to 80, 80 to 90, and 90 to 100. Um, so the reason I'm making this video is most people, when you do your course, you go on the first day, you do 10, 12 meters. Then the next session, which could even be that same day, you do 16 meters. And then the next session, you can do 20 meters. And then you can sign, for the next, sign up for the next level of the course and they'll get you to do, what, like 24 meters. And then the next session, 26, and then 28, and then 30. And it just, if this is your only introduction to freediving, then this is what you believe freediving is. This is how you believe you should train for freediving. And for everybody, it's going to work until a certain point, until a certain depth. Um, but for nobody, is it possible to maintain this steep progression in depth? At some point, there will be like some self-sabotage. Something's going to come up. Um, apart from that, you're, you're not going to be enjoying these dives. These dives are going to feel stressful because you've never had the opportunity to build like a solid base of comfort with the depths of, as you've been progressing. So I hope this video kind of um, makes sense to you out there. I hope it's gave you a new like, insight into how you should train how I train and how I train other people as a professional coach. If you have any questions about what I'm talking about or if you can relate, then feel free to write some comments in the comment section below. And until next time, guys and girls, take it easy and dive safe.